So I'd like to introduce all of you to Craig Wilmore, and he's a professional developer with McGraw-Hill. And so I see several of you are here, Kim and um, Tanya Patino. So uh, Mike Turpin will be joining us. Um, he's driving from Ogden, so he might bop in in, in a little bit. And then um, Craig works for McGraw-Hill, and he's going to talk a little bit about the philosophy of wonders and kind of that evidence based. And then our next one in the series will start to dig into the actual product. So you can hear the why and the rationale and then dig into the product after that. So take it away, Greg. All right, Look. perfect. Um, and so thank you. Uh, I wish I were there in person doing this, but we have to be in Minnesota in the airport. Um, uh, the, the title that I was asked to work on was what to expect when you're expecting an adoption, talking about the reading and wonders and going into that evidence base and research. And so starting off, I just want to hit the science of reading. This is that critical piece, and I don't expect you to read this whole thing, but I want you to think about this as what we need to do is, and then what's in highlighted, highlighted in yellow, and then you drop down to the lower part where you have those bullets. So we need to have research base that is repeated and validated consistently over time, not just one time, but it's consistently with those proven results. And then many of our authorship team have been part of defining this idea of science of reading because it's not a brand new thing. It's been around for many, many, many years. Um, and so we have these key pillars that are part of that literacy and these start at that kindergarten level. Um, as we're moving in. You'll see Scarborough's rope as part of our evidence of how we do things. We use that as kind of our backbone, um, diving into what we have to do for that word recognition, that phonological and that phonemic awareness. The vocabulary is critical with those high frequency words. So as we dive in, all of this with wonders is grounded in that science of reading because it is proven instruction. One of the key things that we will all be diving into when we start the full implementation is the instructional routine handbook. This is that guide of how to teach wonders. It's going to have these routines for all grade levels, kindergarten through fifth grade. These are founded on solid research pieces. We also provide you inside the teacher's edition a simplified version of these routines because we want to respect teachers in their positions of how they are, what they, what they do, and the experience they have in the classroom. Um, we're not going to provide you a scripted you know, set of materials to do with these routines, but we are going to say these are things that have been based on research that provide results to our students, and our students are doing a phenomenal um, in the space here. So we're going to give you tips along the way in the teacher's edition, but you can always find a more scripted version of that in the instructional routine handbook. And I'm going to show you where these are in a very quick second online in just a few minutes. One of the most critical routines that we have for all grade levels, kindergarten through fifth grade, is what we call our close reading routine. This is based on research that Dr. Doug Fisher has done. And Doug Fisher is a well-known, noted author, uh, working with uh, Hattie Fisher and Fry. He's the Fisher part of that Hattie and Fry uh, trio, uh, creating the book Invisible, or Visible Learning. And he's also written several other books. Uh, but he brings to the research table and through his research, this close reading routine. And this is used in every literature selection we use in Wonders, whether it's the shared read, whether it's the anchor text, the paired reading selection, and even our small group differentiated leveled readers. We will go through this red read, which is that superficial, uh, that's that depth of knowledge level one. And when you think about it, the Utah State Assessment rise is testing students at a level three and a level four. And yet a lot of the work that we are teaching students as far as reading, we teach it at a one and a two. And therefore our students struggle when it comes to that test. Yes. 
Wonders is going to change that because we're focusing on this close reading routine, which we do hit those depth of knowledge levels one and two, but we come back and we reread for more depth, for more instruction. Um, we want to analyze the author's craft, what their uh, structure is. We want to have some mini lessons that are going to talk about what is the genre, what makes up a genre, what is the comprehension skill, or what is the strategy we can use to better understand this story. So this is where we start diving deeper in with this Doug Fisher routine of close reading. At the end of every text set, and a text set for kindergarten and first grade is every week, in second grade through fifth grade, it's every two weeks. We will then integrate, and this is where we're bringing all of the reading selections together, and then we're making comparisons and contrasting opportunities. So here's where the students get to read um, back back uh, in the classroom, many of you may have heard of or known my principal was Muffet Reeves, amazing um, a principal, but she had us going through and doing these items of text to text, text to self, text to world, text to technology, and then text to media. That's exactly what this transfer is, that integrate. We're reading a text and comparing it to another text. We're reading some text, and then we're going to compare that to a piece of art or read, uh, compare that. This is how our students are able to get to that depth of knowledge level four. And this is based on that research that Doug Fisher has done. Another piece of research, Wonders is All Green, on a third party research. So they've looked at Wonders. They've looked through the text quality. They, you know, they, we've, we've scored perfect on text quality for grades three, four, and five. So you know that the reading selections in here are powerful. They are highly rated and they're engaging for our students, which makes it even more uh, opportunistic for our students to do or be successful in the classroom. Of course, research. We have that research of efficacy studies. Wonders has been around since 2013. The two, first copyright was a 2014 and we were selling it in 2013. And every three years we have gone through a new iteration of that or an update iteration of that. Listening to teachers, doing our own research from what teachers feel like they need and what teachers want and what they ask for. And so this latest version that Canyons is getting is the Wonders 2023 copyright because it encompasses all of the instructional changes and desires and wants and needs of the research and what teachers are asking for. Our authorship team is unmatched. And so you're going to see people like Doug Fisher, uh, Dr. Timothy Shanahan, who, um, for those of you who don't know, has been part of the National Reading Can uh, Panel. Um, he is a noted author. He was a kindergarten, pre-kindergarten, first grade, and second grade teacher. So he understands that critical element of the foundational skills of phonics, phonemic awareness, fluent, high frequency words, and fluency. Um, you're going to have different people in here. So you see Jan Hasbrook. Um, Dr. Janet Echevarria bringing in the English language arts. And so all these authors and many more have contributed with um, their information, the research that they have done outside and inside McGraw-Hill. There are seven key characteristics to those foundational skills, according to Dr. Jan Hasbrook and Tim Shanahan. Dr. Donald Bear, many of you are going to be familiar with words their way included in here. Every program must have a scope and sequence that is based on solid foundational research. You will have that with Wonders. Wonders is going to show all of that. But then you have to have that phonological awareness, the alphabet skills, and then students move into blending, the primary decoding, and then the, the decoding and encoding. We then move to that building words and word sorts. That's where Dr. Donald Bear comes in and then high frequency words and building fluency and applying those phonic skills to decodable text and writing. This is one of the powerhouses of what Wonders does. 
So as you look at this, this is the flow of a first grade class where we start with a read aloud. Somewhere in between read aloud and the shared read, we're teaching the phonics and foundational skills. So we first start with phonemic awareness. We then tie in phonics and then we go into our shared read because students first need to have a read aloud. They need to listen. They need to hear words. They need to understand some of these words that we're talking about before we start to do the phonological or the phonemic awareness portions of this. We move to the shared read. Then we have our anchor text and our, our paired reading selections. We then tie in down to our guided reading or leveled readers and then decodables. These are all those text sets, but the key piece here based on research is they're all interconnected. When we have ideas and themes that are connected, students have a better chance because they're exposed more frequently to that same idea. So all of these are going to have the essential question. In this particular week, it's what insects do you know about and how are they alike and different? Every single one of these reading selections is going to be dealing with insects. Every single one of them is going to be dealing with point of view. And every single one of them is tied into science in some way. This is where that Scarsborough rope comes in. We have that word recognition on the left-hand side at the bottom in blue. That's that phonological awareness, the decoding, the sight words, all of those. But now what's happening is we are applying that into the language comprehension. And it's the blending or the intertwining of those two pieces, the word recognition and the language comprehension that helps the students build their concepts. So in primary, kindergarten and first grade, we are teaching students how to read so that in grades two and above, we can read to learn. And it's important that we focus on those. And so highly researched are the skills or the routines that we do and wonder. So for example, the long I sound within first grade and kindergarten, we, we notice there's several different spellings of that long I. We use our sound spelling cards, so visuals. We're bringing in multi multi-modalities. So we're trying to fit as many things visual, kinesthetic, tactile, auditory, uh, so that the students have multiple angles to come in and deal with these. So they're touching these cards, they're seeing these cards, they're saying what's on these cards along with the teacher as the teacher repeats. We have our example of a routine of model, guided practice, and then practice in here. Here, we're building that word sight. And so we start off with the S, the sound. S I sight, and we build that. This is based on that solid foundation of Dr. Donald Baer of building these words and helping students understand. But immediately, we're going to practice that long I sound saying a variety of different words that have that long sound I spelled different ways so that the students are starting to see that. We go back and we review because the research says we research tells us we need to constantly spiral back on ideas that we have learned so students don't forget them. But the key differentiator here is we immediately start to connect it to sentences. So then you see down there, why did the child cry? The plane can fly high in the sky. The bright light came at, on at night. All of these are sentences that use that long I sound that we are teaching during this week of study. But we don't stop there. Remember the red read, the green reread, and the blue integrate? We go to our shared read here. And now we're asking students not only to identify words that are spelled with the, the or the, that have the long I sound spelled with Y, we're having them annotate. So they're gonna circle all of the words that have the long I sound ending or starting with the letter Y in it. We then move in, underline and read word, the, read the words laugh and listen because we are reviewing words that we've learned prior. And then here again, we're going to circle words with the long I sound spelled I-G-H. This is how we start building that vocabulary, start building 
uh, that that understanding and it's that application so in the share greet we uh, we annotate in the anchor text now we're actually going to practice using the long i sound as we read this book high fly guy so, so tying everything in making it interconnected so that students have a super amount of powerful repetition next we move into the decodables and as we saw before they all deal with insects and they all deal with the long i sound spelling so we've got the long i spelled with y with i g h with y you know i e and so you you see all of these different decodables for those sound spellings but we don't stop there we provide decodables not only at the k2 but we have decodable passages for third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. Because as I taught fourth and fifth and sixth grade for many, many years, I still had students in fifth grade and sixth grade that needed to have opportunities for decoding. We don't provide them with books now, we provide them with decodable passages that will be focusing on multisyllabic words, root words of Greek and Latin, um, suffixes and prefixes and so they get a chance to practice and decode all of those types of things based on that solid research here's where i'm going to go online and if you want to take a picture of this so that you can then go on and practice after me this is the login information you type into your address bar my.mheducation.com um, and we're not going to dive much into the digital i just want to show you where you can start to see some of the research, some of the white papers that our authors have written. The username that you will use is Explore Wonders, all lowercase. And the password is going to be capital M, capital H, capital E, lowercase E-L-A, and the number 21. I'm going to go online right now. Um, if I can find my online piece. So you should be able to see my screen and I'm looking at grade three wonders and I chose this just because it reminds me of Utah. The cover of each of the books at the grade levels represents a different location within the United States. And this just seems to me it represents the national parks of Utah. So I'm going into my third grade here. All grade levels are going to be the same. I'm going into the teacher's edition. And where I want to do work is in this resource tab up at the very top. You will find all of the research, all of these papers from the authors in the professional development tab right there. That's the only thing we're going to look at. Resources, professional development. When I open that up, it's going to come to an overview right here. So you'll see this gray bar overview. And when I come down, I have research base and white papers. When I click on that, you're going to see the research alignment. You will see academic vocabulary studies, introducing literacy, close reading. There are four pages here of tools and documents that you can read about. Here's one from Tim Shanahan. You have Jan Hasbrook, Doug Fisher. These are all papers that they have written uh, to, to deal with. Here's Kathy Baumgartner. Um, there's a lot in here by Kathy. And then uh, let's see, there should have been one. There should have one, been one by uh, Vicki Gibson, but uh, we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. That is just from this overview page right there on that research. You also have the science of reading. If you are not as familiar as you would like to be with science of reading, here is a simple paper written by Tim Shanahan that talks about the science of reading. And when I pull it up, let's just make this a little easier to, to read for you. He talks about that science of reading and how we use that Scarsborough rope. Um, you'll see that right here. And, we, and, and he'll talk about um, Hollis Scarborough. And she, was, she is, she's still alive. She is a, an amazing researcher on how students learn and what they do and how they have to do that. So this is one of those images that you're going to find inside those research documents here. It's a simple read, it's only 10 pages long, 
Um, but I would suggest making sure you go in here, you understand a little bit about this because it is that science of reading. Another area that we can go into is under that resource tab, professional development, right here, you have author and coach videos. When I click on that little, that darker gray button there, it turns light. And now you have information on foundational skills. Here, you're going to see Dr. Tim Shanahan, because as I mentioned, he was pre-K, K, one and two teacher. He understands that, that acquisition of the, the foundational skills, the, re, the, the letter sounds, writing the letters. It's important as students are learning to say the letter, they learn to write the letter in the air, bringing that gross motor skill. If they're learning the letter S, they're drawing that letter S in the air. We then tie it into drawing it on paper or, or drawing it on their desk, bringing the size down a little bit. Eventually, we put a pencil in their hand. We give them the lined paper with the dotted line in between it, and we teach them how to write the letters on the paper. But it is a process moving from the gross motor skills way up here in the sky down to our desk, which is moving it down a little bit to finally putting a pencil in a student's hand and having them draw and write a letter. As we learn a letter, as we do that found the, the phonemic awareness, we're teaching the students how to write that. This is based on Tim Shanahan's research and work on how students are going to do that. How you apply the foundational skills. You're going to have this in here as, as one of the coaches, I believe it's Jan Hasbrook in there. Again, you have two pages of pieces just on those foundational skills. We know close reading is going to have Dr. Doug Fisher. That's just, uh, he's just the, the, the king of that. But you can see all of these different papers that have been written by our authors from interventions, dual language. You've got uh, social and an emotional learning, if that's an issue that you have. Um, you know, gradual release, collaborative conversations. All of these are found in here. I do wanna go back to overview, to the overview page and this instructional routine right there. This is where you will find your instructional routine handbook. It is found right here. It is full of amazing information for kindergarten through fifth grade. We can actually use this all the way up through an eighth grade class. So if you happen to have your own children that are in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, these instructional routines for multisyllabic words and root words and higher level, um, higher grades would definitely work for any of those students um, that are in there. That's all I'm showing digitally because I know one of the sessions that you're going to have down the road in March, I believe, is going to be a deeper dive into the digital. So let me just come up here, wrap up a little bit, and then answer some questions that we might have um, as, as we're nearing the end of our time here together. Again, online, you go to that resource tab in the teacher center, go to the professional development area, and you are going to find all kinds of information that is valuable to read. My first choice would be that instructional routine handbook get that, start pouring over that, particularly if you are in the primary grades of kindergarten, first and second grade. But if you are third, fourth and fifth grade teacher, look at the routines that are belt, de dealing with those concepts around those um, close reading routines, um, the writing routines, um, the uh, sound spelling routines, all of those different types of routines that are in there. So I'm going to stop there and see if we can uh, answer some questions that you might have. You can go ahead and type them in the chat or you can unmute. Does anyone have any questions for either myself or Craig? Could be about the adoption or about the product. I couldn't have been that clear. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Um, this is Lisa Kalenko. I teach third grade at Peruvian Park Elementary. So I am just wondering when we get our hands on materials. Um, 
The physical materials, I'm not sure when, uh, Susan, do you know when that is supposed to happen? Yes, um, well, sort of. The <laughs> PO has been processed and sent out and um, Michael assured me that um, we won't have our, so there's shipping issues across the US, but we've already got, um, We've already got ours earmarked for us from McGraw Hill because they knew that we were going to put in our PO. And so um, those are going to get to Mountain States in the next few weeks. And those are have been earmarked to go to Canyons as a buy because it's a 2023 product. Because yep. that's what Michael, who you see on the screen there, the local representative has told me. When those come, they'll be barcoded. And our goal is to get our first goal is to get you um, number one checked out to you so that you can do your trainings over the summer if you choose to do so. Our um, second goal is to get you all your teacher's manuals. And our goal for that is the end of May. So before you dismiss, you won't see all the physical materials because some of those will be done. Um, some of those will be done during the summer, um, like the student uh, books and those kind of things, but we're hopeful that you'll have at least one teacher manual, if not all six teacher manuals before the end of the year. And then you also have access to the digital where you yeah. can find you can find your teacher's editions online and, and start just kind of pouring through and looking at those um, by using this demo account here. And so this will give you access to go in, find your teacher's editions yeah, for yeah, each yeah. of the units and then you'll be able to, you know, just kind of glance through them, get a little head start uh, before the training. Yes, yes, and we've been trying to push out that um, that demo account. So mm -hmm. if you haven't looked at the demo account, please do. And there will be one of these bite-sized PDs about how to um, go through the. I've had teachers go on and they're confused because they are used to the Sabbath and this is arranged differently. So someone will help you to show you how the kitchen is organized and where to find the same things that you're used to looking for. And the nice thing is I'm local. So I just live in Utah County. Um, and uh, I probably should put in the chat my email address just because I like people to reach out when they have questions so I can try and answer those. Make sure I spelled education. <laughs> so there's my email address, craig.wilmore, two L's, at mheducation.com. And we, we do have short video clips you know, uh, how to navigate online. I know that uh, Susan already has planned at least two more of these 30-minute uh, little sessions, and one of them is a deeper dive into the digital. That's why I only went into the resource uh, professional learning portion. Any other questions? I can't, Tanya, you're so quiet. I can't believe you always have a question for me. <laughs> Well, I do have a question. I have oh, okay. several questions. All right. But um, I had a question about, he was, I know that, and maybe this isn't the time to bring it up, that's why I didn't, but I know that we will be using 95% for our phonics group, which also has its own decodables. I'm wondering if our scope and sequence um, is going to mesh uh, with wonders and 95% so that whatever uh, phonics skill wonders has that we are not using, that it is in 95% and they go right together so that we're not picking this lesson out of 95% that goes with this lesson in wonders. So we're working on that scope and sequence right now. And um, you will be teaching 95% for or phonemic awareness, phonics, spelling, handwriting. And so far what we've seen, and, I'm, and we've only done um, one grade um, because it's a K-3 issue. So 
um, out of those grades, we, um, we have seen the scope and sequence, they catch up to each other after about six weeks. So you won't have to pick and choose. We'll map that out for you and it will be, you won't be skipping around. You'll go through wonders at the same rate and you'll go through 95 at the same rate. So it becomes a true page turning program. And with that, I say that in quotes, meaning you still should use your teacher agility, still should pick and choose what you do, but you don't have to think about, I have to do all this planning. So will the decodables then, once that they start to mesh, we will be able to um, utilize the decodables from 95% along with wonders and kind of use them together depending on um, what our SBI um, is using that day and still have them kind of correlate with each other? Yep. I think so. Um, and when I say I think so, I'm not done with all the mapping of that. Does that make sense? Yes. So I, I'm, I'm working on it. So we believe that what will happen is after you'll have two decodables, the passages from 95, and you'll have true books from um, Wonders, and you can use those true books after a few weeks um, from Wonders. And they so and your main selections, which is what we call them in Reading Street, they're called anchor text in Wonders. And uh, K and one, those are highly decodable. And Craig, correct me if I'm wrong here. And two, they start to be not as much decodable. They're a correct. little more rich text. Correct. And so you won't have to worry about your anchor selections. It's the K, the kindergarten teachers and the first grade teachers that will have, have a bigger push to do with that. So. And in the chat, I dropped in the scope and the scope and sequence of the wonders phonics. Um, just as an example, this is the scope and sequence K two of the phonics in there. It is from the twenty twenty, but the the scope and sequence really didn't change in twenty twenty three. Okay. Well, did you have more questions, Tanya? Because you said you had several. I'm just let, letting you to be brave in a brave space because if you have a question, other people do too. So yeah. Um, well, then I was then I was assuming that um, word your way, which many of us love, is not going to be utilized, even though it's in wonders because we're doing um, spelling through ninety five percent with our phonics. You most likely will not uh, rely on words their way, so you would use. Um, 95 is your core, and if you needed to supplement, you could use something from McGraw-Hill. That's what we're asking you to do, yeah. Okay. Just okay. for the foundation block, just for the foundation block. When you okay. do vocabulary, language comprehension, close reading, all of those people, all of that portion will come out of McGraw-Hill. Are, are, are you going to be using the spelling from McGraw-Hill also? Because that's where you'll see words their way is from in the spelling with the word sorts and, and those types of uh, activities. Um, the, we are using the spelling in grades four and five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the spelling list will come from 95% group, but it also has sorts and has all of those things in it as well. Yeah. All the science of reading people are all meshed together. I mean, um, Judy Ferrario is at 95% group. She also worked for um, Sopris West, who's now Lexia, and all and all, and they all talk to people like um, Dr. Doug Fisher. I mean, they all know each other. You, I've seen them at conferences where they're all interacting. So. Um, this is why we chose these two programs is to be able to make sure that everything is embedded in the science of reading, that you have more foundational work every single day. And that's because so many things with COVID, but you'll still get all of the supplies from McGraw-Hill. So in three years, if, if things need to change, you'll still have all of those supplies to be able to do that. And I wonders be would dead, be but, yeah. um, accessible through Clever also? Yes, it has a LTIA integration and it is clever. Yes. Great. 
Thanks. Okay. Well, it's past 4.30, it's 4.35. So if anyone needs to leave, they are welcome to. If anyone still has a question, I bet Craig would stay on for a couple more minutes. So do you still have more questions, Tanya at all? No? Yes? Okay. <laughs> no. Lisa or Laura, any questions? Okay, well, thank you, Craig. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. And um, we're going to see Craig again, or Christina, his counterpart, um, in, in March. So we'll send out, there will be more, we'll, we'll get more into the material. So exciting times. Very much. All right, good to see Thanks you. Nice to Tom. see you all. Thank you.